Anthony Visco has a long history of painting and winning and, and uh, being in shows, but I will just mention a background, a little background for the audience, the TV audience. A Plymouth, Massachusetts resident recognized and popular painter of oils, acrylics, and watercolors. He was educated at the New England School of Art and Design, which is now the New England School of Art and Design at Suffolk University, and the School of Visual Art in New York. Mr. Visco is currently a signature member of the New England Watercolor Society, a PCA Russell Gallery artist, member of the Copley Society of Boston, and associate member of the National American and Transparent Watercolor Society. Anthony's paintings focus heavily favor New England coastline scenes or abandoned objects that are in contrasting settings. His work is diversified both in subject matter and style and may be seen online at many different um, sites, but the one that's easiest is um, his initials, P. Anthony Visco.com. He has won many um, juried member shows, the latest being the annual Plymouth Center for the Arts juried show in, in Plymouth. But he's also won the ones in Duxbury, in Boston, in Plymouth, in Newport, and Duxbury. And I won't bother you, but there's a long list, and it, and it goes on the next page. So Anthony's very, very talented, and we're very lucky to have him, and I appreciate you coming this way, and thank you. I'll hand it over to you, Anthony. Thank, thank you, you very much. And welcome Is him. This, are you good with the sound? Good. Thank you. Thank you. I would hold play. that. It may not work out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> just, let's you know, take it now. Okay. I've just just a real quick rundown. What I'm going to do is I I am I paint both very tight and very loose. I, I'm one of those people that have the ability to go back and forth and do that, but. But for demonstration purposes, and because I love it more than anything else, is that I, I, I would prefer to work n nice and loose. It's just a, it's it's more energetic. There's a lot more going on. There, it's a it's a lot of fun to do. Um, you never know what's going to happen because if you're painting really loose, and you don't apply the paint correctly, you know it's just going to go. It just sometimes it just you, it gets lost. So. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this scene. What I've done is I've, I've already pre drawn out because we don't have, I think we've got a limited amount of time because we have to be out of here by a quarter. quarter. So I've got, what, two hours. And then you want to take some time. So if we work for about maybe an hour or so, we just take a break and then we'll finish it up. That way it can dry. And I may get this done before that. I'm not sure. Well, very seldom. <laughs> anyway, so what this is is made, this is a scene that I, I concocted from this. This is just basically, uh, just basically a winter scene of of, of just a creek uh, with a lot of wood, and then I sort of decided that I wanted some trees in the foreground and throw throw a couple of homes back there or shacks or whatever you want to call it, and uh, and I've done it. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out by basically coming in here and painting uh, the sky area, and I'm going to paint the sky area uh, wet. So essentially what I'm really doing is taking my largest brush here and coming in here and I'm going to, again, we're, it's about energy. So energy is, we're going to go from warm to cool here. And I'm going to be probably painting over most of the stuff that's dark. Uh, because in watercolor, one of the nice things we have going for it not only is leaving the paper white where it has to stay white, but if you paint from light to dark, you can paint over the light stuff, so you don't have to worry about cutting around and everything else. I am, by nature, a lazy painter, which means I won't use masking fluid. <laughs> I hate masking anything out. Uh, it's just, for me, very uncomfortable to work that way because it's too rigid, too disciplined, too much time. Masking fluid takes too much time to lift off the paper. And the other thing is, is that you can't work with this kind of paper with masking fluid because this is a soft fibered paper. You can use ashes, you can use Fabriano, because it's nice and hard and durable, but you can't use anything that's a soft fibered paper because the stuff will just rip, it out, rip right off. So it's one of the disciplines that I have. Now you're gonna find out working, working this way, vertically, uh, I run the risk of a lot of drips and, drain and stuff like that, but 
hopefully that'll lend to the ambiance of the piece. We'll see what happens. Um, but I'm going to start over here. We're going to just move across in my sky area, and I'm going to just work a little bit of warmth in here and then come in here and work, get cooler as I go across. And the whole concept behind this is basically working from warm to cool and from light to dark. So we're gonna, you're going to see me put in some colors that maybe you're going to say are not appropriate. I don't know. You know, if you go to a sky, for instance, you're going to end up with a sky that's a blue sky, some of you. And uh, I want to just sort of move this across a little bit. And I'm not going to worry too much about it. Uh, I can't. One of the other things is, is that if I'm doing a winter scene, I actually don't want all this drippage because, it, because that's going to end up causing me a problem. So let me see if I can get some of that out of here. Um, so I'm going to move from warm, come over here to cool, my cool subject. I'm going to get a little bit more into this wonderful stuff, this nice warm purpley, cool purpley kind of stuff that's going on. And, I, and this is actually a mixture for those of you. Um, alizarin crimson is a great color to use when mixing with cobalt blue or, or French ultramarine blue and so forth because it gives you a nice purple. But I found that um, opera, which is a, like a permanent rose or something like that, it's a nice vibrant color, gives you a much more energetic, lighter purple -ish color. So it just works out that you, you work into that. So I'm coming over here and I'm just going to sort of move this along a little bit. And I'll try to stay again. I told her I'd try to stay out of the way, but I need to paint. So you can see this. And I'm going to work in my areas where my background, the trees in the background, are going to be basically in this area right here. And I'm, what I'm really doing is I'm just sort of cutting around the top of the house so that what we can we can start to do it and if I do this right and there's enough consistency if there's enough consistency in the pigment I won't get these runs I should get it should hold because paint the paint is only going to go where the water is or theoretically at least normally I don't I teach this way but normally when I work in the studio I'm working at maybe a 30 degree angle all right, so, so, but in order for you to see it, I don't, I mean, I don't think you can see it if I'm working down flat. So it's just, it's just easier to do it this way. So we're just going to sort of move this around and move it along. And I'm going to sort of just come around here, cut around the roofs of the house. And generally speaking, I'm going to try to keep with a large brush for the most part. Um, for most of the painting. And again, I'm not really too worried about how this is uh, going to work out because generally speaking what ends up happening is if you paint the watercolor already too light, if you start out with what you think is correct, it isn't correct because the watercolor is going to absorb into the paper and it's going to get lighter. So if I want something that's darker, I got to be very careful about when I put it on to make sure that it's dark enough so that it'll hold up. So I'm just sort of working some of this stuff across um, yellow ochre with, um, now I'm going to get into a little bit more yellow ochre with a little bit of my green, my, my uh, uh, cerulean blue here and come in and come between these trees here. Oh, I'm painting the tree. Well, okay, we'll just move the tree over. You know, you think I had to look at the drawing before I started it. But, all right, so we'll put the tree over here. We'll just move the tree over a little bit. My tree is going to be right in here. Okay, so it's all about sort of, sometimes it's about these interesting shapes because what happens is that it, this is really negative painting. If you, if you think about um, what we're doing. And get a little bit more this sort of greenish color down here. Um, and we're going to come up here. And I need again a 
excuse me for a second while I do this. All right, and this is and this is these are the, this is basically going to be the tree area. A lot of these are going to turn into just hopefully interesting trees. I'm mixing right now. What I'm doing is I generally don't carry any green with me at all, so I, I'm constantly mixing colors on the palette. And you're going to find that this is going to be a cadre of just various mixtures of, of uh, different uh, colors that I'm working with. And quite frankly, I'm more interested in the value than, in, than I am the actual color of the that I'm putting in. Because um, we'll, we'll deal with that later. One of the things that I've got is a primary painting that's going to go on over here. And then what we'll do is we'll do a secondary on the top of that. Um, as I go, as it dries. So, so this is basically my background area. And what I'm really doing is just sort of coming in here and dabbing this and dabbing that <coughs> and just playing around with getting some interesting darks behind this because most of this all of most of the stuff down here is going to be light and white, and and I'm going to leave some of the white of the paper. But so this gives me my my just my generalities. And you notice that I I'm I'm moving this over farther than direct center. I'm trying to get this thing so from a design point of view, you're not sitting here dead center where this is ending. You want to come over a little bit more with it with the tree line so that so that it becomes more of an interesting uh, interesting shape. So that's, let's say, that'll probably work out for, for the transition between this warm, going into a little bit of cool stuff and getting into these darks. So you're getting from light to dark and you're going from warm to cool and you got some energy build up. And that's generally how, when I paint, I start to work. That's what, that's, most of the paintings that I do work in that, I work this kind of realm out. Uh, and, it, and I find that every painting I do, I can do this painting 7, 10, 15 times and every one of them are going to be different. I have not ever been able to copy my own work and do it exactly like. I don't know about you guys, but you know, in, it, for me, um, every time I do this stuff, it's fresh and new and, and it's like a learning curve all over again. So I, I um, and besides, why do, why do you want to copy it exact? You know, I mean, why, why go through that process? So I've got something going on there. I got my, my homes, my buildings that are outlined. Uh, and now what I'm going to do is start to take a look at uh, putting in some, maybe f some of this more fresh stuff over here uh, using a little bit of light green. I'm using New Gamboge and I'm mixing it again with one of my blues. I'll use cobalt blue, get a little bit greener um, and maybe throw some some stuff back here because this is all going to be my tree line is coming down this way I think I, th I believe so and we'll go between these trees and move it over here so we've got some stuff that's going on alright so that's basically gives me my outline and you can see where the you can see where the spacing I'm leaving here is is where the trees are going to be and again I'm going to paint those dark so I'm not really concerned too much about whether I go over the edges or not go over the edges I mean you know if, if I did that I'd probably go and mask it and use different kind of paper so I've got that set up right now and I've got all of this sort of nice wonderful uh, snow in the background over there and I'm going to paint down first of all, and maybe what I want to do is I want to touch a little bit on this, on this, on the houses, and put in my shadow areas. So let me get rid of some of this stuff on the palette. Um, you guys, paint water. All, are you, all of you watercolorists? 
So do you keep a clean palate or a dirty palate? Huh? Well, no, a lot of people, no, dirty palate, yeah, no, a lot of people will start with that, yeah, absolutely. Because basically, most of the people that I found that, that work with palates that are not clean, that, that you just go in and mix the stuff up and you start to play around and put it in the sky, are, are um, tonalists as opposed to colorists. I mean, they don't, you know, they, they don't, they, because this is all, we're all about doing a couple of things. There's a lot of people that will paint with very bright colors, and other people will just, you know, just paint with a lot of tone and then throw a little dab of color here and there and, and, and it's just enough to, to bring it around. I tend to do a little bit of each. Uh, I haven't found my thumbprint yet, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but most of the time, I'll need to clean the palette off because if I, especially if I now go into this, an area over here where I want, I want to wet the area and I don't want a lot of dirty pigment dirty water in here, and I want to be able to sort of bring in some brighter colors. Um, then, as an example, if I come in here and I paint, I paint my house back here. The, the, uh, generally, I'm just going to come down here with a couple of warm, just, I'll just a couple of warm sweeps of, what am I using? A little bit of yellow ochre, I guess, and I'm moving from yellow ochre into a little bit of Little, I added a little bit of red to it, my cadmium red, yellow ochre, a little bit more pigment. But I want, I'm going to put the shadows on this side, so I want the brightness of this over here. And I want some transition to, to move from a little bit lighter over here to a little bit darker in that area. And then what I'll do is I'll do the same thing with the house in the back. Um, we're going to end up I've got a little building back here, and we're just going to put something that's nice and light. Okay, so we'll start to see the face of the buildings as not really a lot of pigment. A lot of water, very little pigment, because I'm trying to keep it vibrant. I want to keep it energetic. And I found that if I do this with light material, if I use a lot of water with a little bit of pigment to tone it, that it becomes a little bit more interesting. It's a little bit more, uh, it's brighter, it's more energetic. Uh, so uh, again, it it's just depends on what it happens. And maybe this house back here, I'm gonna make, I'll make that a white house, a white-er, whitish house. So all I'm really gonna do here is just throw a little bit of shadow using my blue, or it's now polluted, so it's blue-green, but we really don't care. All right, so we'll just do this and bring a little shadow down uh, and throw something in there and, and add a little bit of tone to it so that we've got, a, you know, a variety. Oh, we don't have really a variety of tones. So let me just make sure that we do have a little bit of variety of tone. Let me make that house, this thing here, a little bit redder back here. So we do have a little bit of variety. There you go. All right, so... Just, just to give it some, break it up a little bit, right? So we, we, it's, it's a stepping process, um, working generally uh, to the overall feel of it. I'm more interested in the overall feel of how this thing works. Uh, I don't want to run into, I do not want to run into this with my shadow. So what I'm going to basically do is come down here, this shadow side, Well, I said I didn't want to run into it, didn't I? <laughs> All right, well, we'll live with it. It's telling me, don't worry about it. Okay, so that'll work for now. And if I have a shadow there, then what ends up happening is, is that usually what ends up happening is what? We have a shadow on the snow coming off the house. So we'll just sort of put this in. And soften it up a little bit. A little, little squirt of water will just help to drain that down a bit. Actually, I lost this one. Let's see if I can get that back. All right, so I'm going to leave that, let that run and do whatever it wants to do. We'll go back at the at a later time, and I'll put in a lot more 
uh, the windows, all the dock stuff will come at the end. Don't want to do that right now. I just wanted to get this thing in real quick. Um, so I sort of get the feel of what I want over here, and it's setting up a little bit. And I'm coming in over the side over here, and we're just going to introduce some, some of, again, this tone back here uh, off in the distance. And come in with it, draw this down a bit, tie that sort of tie that together. Normally, what I usually do if I was telling, I was telling, I think you, usually what I do before I even do these things is that I'll work out a value study first. Because for me, what all of, this, all of these paintings are about are shapes and light. Big shapes, large shapes, bringing all these shapes, bringing this whole shape, for instance, here into as one shape. Actually, this shape, this shape back here, and all of this stuff that's over here is one shape. Uh, the same way with this, you know, you're bringing in shapes. This is a shape, the light shape behind everything else, and this is one big shape that's a U-shape right here. So I try to do that stuff. I try to get in and design this stuff a little bit. The same way with this here. Um, this was a, an exercise in doing as little as possible to get you to understand that all of that is, that's a, that's a cliff with rocks, maybe on a sandy beach, and there was absolutely, for me, no need to bring this back over here and do all the little detail work and all the little crevices. Let your mind do it. You, you'll hopefully be able to make that transition and do it yourself. Whether or not I succeed or not is basically up to you because you're the one that's looking at it. The same way with all of the stuff that's going on over here. If you really look at the stuff close, it's just garbage. And, you know, hopefully when you get back far enough, it looks good. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what painting is, that's what it's all about, you know? And I know garbage is probably not the term you want to hear, but it's technically... Um, okay, so we've got some stuff that's going on here. We'll just, we, we have a transition. I'm going to wet this area right here, and just, just so that it helps us along a little bit, um, we're going to end up flowing some... Because because I've got shadow going this way, but I have to make this, I have to do something with this. So if the sun's coming down here, this is going to be lighter over here. This is going to have to be soft up on the top, because if it's if it literally is is lighting up this way, and I've got shadow over here, I can't put shadow down here, can I? I mean, I can because it's my painting, but but it's not. So what I want to do is just soften this up a little bit over here until we add a little bit of water and make that nice and soft. And we're going to do the same thing. I can do it on this side. So on this side here, we can probably come down here, paint right through this tree, right through that tree there. And we can come down again with a little bit of shadow, uh, maybe a little bit more of a shadow. And I'll use a, this sort of blue back here. And the light's hitting here, so it probably, it probably would get maybe a little bit bluer as it comes down. And I know that's a big statement, and it's a big difference in the color, but why, again, you know, I'm trying to think in terms of how it's going to end up, not how it's going to appear right now. Um, and, and it's interesting to see what happens when you start to do this stuff, because usually, usually the stuff works out all right. All right, so we're going to make a transition, cool, a little bit warmer as it comes down, white, a little bit of tone on that snow. A little bit of tone in that snow. Light over here against the dark, and, um, and we'll see again where it goes. So I've got these nice big trees, which I will put in later. I just want to bring some of this soft stuff down over here. So the same thing is going to take place here, in that I have, to, I have to wet it a bit, and then again hit the top of it. and let that sort of just run and play with it and just let it go where it wants to go. Uh, and hopefully we'll create snow. All right, so now I'm going to get into a little bit more warmer snow over in this area because we got the light coming down here, so now it's going to skim across here, and I'm going to warm it up a bit. And hopefully we'll start to see 
if this if the, if it stays this <laughs> this walkway or this white area that's over here between these areas i got a couple of people that i'm going to put in here uh, in a bit um, so we come back take a look say yeah that's where we want to go we want a light area over here 